Hey, good morning my YouTube fans, Admiral Preparedness here. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. For all you folks out there who are beginner preppers, follow me along as I go into my favorite Walmart and show you the items that you would, night, would like to purchase that you could put in your prepping supplies. We're going to cover food, medicine, clothing, tools, survival equipment, things that you need to keep in your survival protection. This is going to be a series of videos, so stay tuned for more. When you're trying to decide what type of canned meats to get, think of long-term food storage and also short-term food storage. The vitamins, minerals, proteins, sodium content, these items here taste really good. And remember, when you eat them, divvy them up to small portions, depending on your family size. For small families, one person could go with, with one of these cans for about three days. Try them out, do your recipes, and remember, one is none, two is one, three is two. This is a product that I haven't seen here before fully cooked corned beef, product of Brazil. Pause to look at the ingredients. And it already has the church key connected to it so you don't lose it. There's the barcode and the price is 344. Libby's has their corned beef for four thirty-eight. Let's take this home. Maybe one of our taste tests. We'll never know. Coconut milk is a good long-term storage item. Goes great with lots of recipes. to look at the ingredients. Easy open lid. Manufacture date and Best Buy date also. Looks like we'll be taking this home too. Chili sauces. Folks, if you want to spice up any bland food, any bland food, stock up on chili sauce. Hot sauce, mild, or red, burn your tongue hot. Prices are pretty reasonable, but remember, always think about the food that you're going to be eating during an SHTF event and how to spice it up. Remember how we talked about spices just a moment ago? These will always last a super long time in your food pantry. Mostly solids, not the liquids. But when you come in to get your spices, remember, buy one, but you might also just buy two and put one aside. When those trucks stop delivering this type of product, you're going to be out of it great barter item too because these large containers like this you can break them down into those pill bottles you've been saving and you use your marker to label them to tell them what they are so that way when you're doing your barter you can barter out black pepper mrs. dash old bay all the things that people would still be needing when that truck stops delivering don't forget you have bulk items if you have a lot of kids, a lot of mouths to feed, grandkids, other relatives that live with you. Bulk cans are the way to go. 
sweeteners. You got to have the sweeteners. You're just gonna have to have them to give that food that extra special taste. Sugar stores well. Freeze it first when you get it home. Put it in your freezer for about a week. That way any things that are growing in it or living in it or potentially could live in it are killed off. Vacuum pack it or place it in a container that's airtight. Put it where you can monitor it over time. Keep it well away from moisture. And it should last for decades. Your cooking oils do have a shelf life. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If they could dry this stuff and make it in a dry form, you could use it, but here's what you get instead. Lard, shortening. Those will last for quite a while. Folks, cereals will last quite a while as long as they don't have nuts in them. Raisin Bran I've had for five years. Just as crunchy and chewy as the day it was put in the bag. But you have to remember one thing. They do take on odors if they're not properly packaged and stored. Don't put them in your garage. Don't put them on your oil or gasoline products or petrochemical products because they will absorb that flavor. That, that'll be, just be disgusting. What you do is you put them in a nice dry place. And gluten-free. That seems to be one of those big hot topics these days. Gluten-free. If you've got somebody in your family who's gluten-free, there's plenty of things for them so they don't starve. The way to get to be... There's, there's different techniques to get person to get gluten tolerant. It just takes time. Do your research on gluten and how to desensitize somebody who is gluten to uh, intolerant. Chocolate syrup does have a good shelf life, as long as it's kept in a cool, dark, dry place and away from critters. Refrigeration would be proper once you've opened the container, so that's the only drawback about these large containers. The smaller the container, the better. Crackers, biscuits, crunchies, these do real well if you do the right thing on how to properly preserve them. One gentleman says what they do is put them in mason jars, put them in the oven, heat them up. That's a good way of doing it. These pre-packaged processed fruit cups do store well. I've had in my past and in my videos what does it taste like now series take a look at those in my playlist this times eight magnifying mirror could be used for other things signaling mirror fire starting and to examine a finger with a splinter in it definitely something to think about if the truck stop coming, these stop showing up too. Buy one, put one aside. You never know, you may have to get out there and pick up some things that you don't want to contaminate your hands with. We've talked about this before trash bags. Some have odor catching, requestration. Definitely want to purchase and set aside large trash bags. Think of what happens when you don't have trash collection or you're out on your scavenge and you find things that you need to get them out of the environment to protect your health later on. Always remember, a couple trash bags in your bug out bag or your divvy or your scavenge bag, 
is necessary and you really wish you had them if you walk into a abandoned building and there's biological contamination for all you folks out there who have the little ones grandkids or your own during an SHT and during an SHTF event you're gonna find yourself with little ones and the needs of those little ones a lot of things can be stored away so their health can be protected from all those nasties remember the little ones can't fend for themselves they depend on you to do that for them stock up on cloth diapers barter anything you can for those little ones for all those folks out there who are arts and crafts you already have all the good things that you need but there is always room for more storage boxes twines tools things that you need to repair when that truck stops delivering you want to occupy your time with arts and crafts. Those are barter items. You build them, put them together, take them to your neighbors and friends. Trust me, when society is trying to recover, everybody's going to be looking for something to do. They did it in the past, they'll do it in the future. If somebody tells you to go fly a kite, now you can fly a kite for a dollar sixty-seven or nine ninety-seven, a very inexpensive way to act, take, take your time away from your pr trouble. And for our little creatures, don't forget, one is none, two is one for our birds or our other small pets. Remember that slogan, folks: one is none, two is one for five dollars, five thousand milliamp hour battery pack. Can't beat that price anywhere.